thought I would revive the regular show by telling you the continuation of a story that I haven't done a series for a long time. The story you're about to hear is about what happened in the park 25 years after the end of the series. And what is his place in this story? There are a few facts you need to know and you need to know them before you start the video. 1. This story is canon. That is, this story really happened 25 years later. This was confirmed by the screenwriters. 2. I have always done the original story of the series on my channel. I highly recommend it if you want to learn the unknowns and the story behind it. 3. This story does not have a cartoon series and this is a cartoon but as I said the story is canon. 4. To be honest I did not read this. A YouTube channel made this video and I saw it from him. This channel called Wilski Boom made this video about 3 years ago so he is the original owner. While thanking both of them I will try to tell you this video with the difference of the original story. So before starting the video you can like the video, express your opinions in the comments and subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed. Thank you to my fellow members and don't forget to stop by for theories if you haven't come to my discord server yet. Welcome to my fairy tale, grandpa video and my channel. The story goes like this. Some of you may remember all the old park employees gathered and had a party together. At the end of the story it ended with Pop saying that it was a very good show when he released the tape. And that's when the story really picks up. Rigby and Mordecai were going upstairs to look at the games when Benson came up to them in a panic. I know you don't work in the park anymore, but if I ask you for help, you won't break me. He looked at them with pleading eyes. After our mischievous duo asked what's wrong, Benson said, we don't have any eyes. If there is no eyes, the party will be ruined. He looked at them with worried eyes and asked if they would please buy eyes from outside. For the sake of the past, they said, of course we will, don't worry about it, and entered one of the streets behind the park. In this part, I want to tell you something to make you realize. You remember, similar events used to happen in the old continuous series adventures. Benson Rigby and Mordecai would give a ridiculous or important mission. They would screw it up and on top of that they would end the story with a strange anomaly. Now we are facing an event, just like 6 years ago. The sad part is that we are getting older. It has been 1.5 years since I told you this story and more than 6 years since the series ended. Maybe in 10 years there will be no one left of us and only a handful of people will remember this. Just like the forgotten Samurai Jack, sadness has set in. Sorry this video is a bit like reminiscing. Anyway, let's continue the story. Suddenly, Rigby's wallet is stolen on the street they enter. While they are chasing the person who stole it, a lot of goblins appear in front of them. When these goblins were about to attack them, they were saved by another goblin. Our duo explains the situation to the genie and the genie helps them how to get the eyes. Where the genie takes them, there is a genie that defecates eyes. Forget the absurdity of the event. What is a genie that defecates eyes? Anyway, they get the eyes from the genie and set off. After thanking the genie, Mordecai and Rigby ask how they can pay you back. The genie laughs with a sly smile, saying that you want to pay your debt. Anyway, when they wake up in the morning, they see that Mordecai and Rigby have returned to their young selves. As they look at each other, unaware of what they are, a note slipped through the window. In this note, 
He completes by saying that you paid your debt by taking your children and I sent you back 25 years ago. Our duo rush to that place to find the genie again, but they can't find that street again. As always, our SIK piece intervenes in the situation. Later, they learn that for the street to be there again, the name of the street and the time they passed through must match. Otherwise, the portal cannot open again and they cannot find the genie. Knowing that there is someone who can fix this, they go to the mayor and tell him about the situation, but he ignores them and rejects their offer. On that very day, there is an election and the two of them put a banners all over the place, declaring their candidacy for the presidency. As a result, they become president. Their first job is to change the number of the street. Immediately afterwards, they give the presidency back to the former president. They go to that street at that exact time and go through the portal. Mordecai, Rigby and Skips find the castle of that cunning genie. While meeting the genie, Mordecai and Rigby see their own children, but their children don't recognize them. The genie throws them out. Meanwhile, a messenger comes to the genie and says that one of his children will make a coup against the genie. They realize that the genie who kidnapped their children is actually facing such a job because their own children are bad and they make a deal. Mordecai and Rigby say that the genie will make their children respectful and good. As a result, they want to get their own children back in return for their good children. The genie also accepts this offer. The duo finds Travels, one of the genie's children, and they identify his problem. Travels faces communication problems in general and they think that the remedy for this will overcome it by training next to the muscle man. When they go to the muscle man, Travels cannot get along with the muscle man. The duo finds a magic item and they use that magic item over and over again until the day when the muscle man gets along with Travels by constantly rewinding time. Now, here I understand this briefly, but this process is quite long. Then Travels makes a deal with the muscle man and completes his training. Now Travels can talk and communicate with people very easily. Then they find the second child of the genie. The problem of this genie named Portusha is game addiction. That's why they are extremely irresponsible. In the past, this problem caused them a lot of trouble and they couldn't solve it themselves. That's why they ask Benson for help, but they get a negative response. Just then, Mordecai and Rigby look in the corner of the room and see items from their old adventures. Using these items, they turn the Benson into a kind of arcade game. The logic of the game is to do the chores in the park and Portusha, thinking he is playing a game, completes the chores and thus gets rid of this problem. While Mordecai and Rigby are congratulating the genie for educating their children, he suddenly appears with a huge army. Then thank you for raising my goblin children. Thanks to you, they can now lead my army. Now it's time to take over the world, he laughs at them. In the meantime, even though they have their children, they wage war with the whole world against this goblin army, but they lose. After this part, the whole team gathered again, but a long time has passed, and they are preparing to defeat the genie for the last time because the genie has taken over the whole world. After an epic battle, hope suddenly they come to the present day. The genie laughs at them, saying that because you educated my children, I gave you a 25-year adventure. Just like in the old days, I had a good time for you. The duo, who are angry at this, tie the genie to a rocket 
and throw it into space. That's how the book ends. In fact, I think they could have made this into a mini-series and it would have been perfectly enjoyable to watch. I wonder what your ideas are on this subject. Don't forget to express your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video. Like the video and take care of yourself. Goodbye.